Well, hello everyone. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Carrie Hope Fletcher and today we are talking books but not just any books. If you have been watching my channel for long enough, you will know that two of my biggest passions in life are books and theatre. And so today, my friends, we are doing this. Today, I'm going to take you through a pile of books that are all about theatre, some of which I have read and can vouch for and can tell you that they are glorious, and there's a couple that are still on my TBR, so we can discover those together. But as much as I love reading, nothing makes me quite as happy as reading about theatre. So here we go. Book number one, The Understudy by David Nichols. I actually just found the receipt in the back of this book. I bought it in 2010 when I went on a bit of a David Nichols spree and I read One Day, Start of a Ten and The Understudy. This is all about Stephen C. McQueen who is the understudy to a man called Josh Harper who has been dubbed the 12th sexiest man alive? In the world, yeah. The sexiest man alive, essentially. And Stephen feels very much overshadowed by the person that he is understudying. However, he then falls in love with Josh Harper's wife. And things get messy, as they do in most David Nichols novels. Things get messy. But I remember reading this and just having a really fun time. It's very funny. Um, much like Start of a Ten, it's quite cringy. There's a few real cringe worthy moments in there that are going to make your insides shrivel slightly. But it's really fun. The next novel is one that I haven't read, but I've had on my shelves for so long. And I definitely need to read it because everyone tells me it's amazing. It is Wise Children by Angela Carter. A richly comic tale of the tangled fortunes of two theatrical families, the hazards and the chances, Angela Carter's witty and bawdy novel is populated with as many sets of twins and mistaken identities as any Shakespeare comedy and celebrates the magic of over a century of show business. I mean, that sounds delightful and definitely one I'm going to read very, very soon. Next up is a series of books that I absolutely adored when I was growing up. They were published in 2006, so the first one was, so how old would I have been? I would have been 13? 14? The Diamond of Drury Lane. I mean, even just that cover is enough to make my little theatrical heart go all warm and fuzzy. And the sticker on the book, for the price, says entry fee, like you're buying a theatre ticket. <sighs> just genius and I love it so much and just opening this book gives me all of the feels as well it makes me feel like I'm 13 14 again and reading this book for the first time honestly you need to read this book this book is set at the theatre royal Drury Lane which is where my boyfriend is about to be playing Hans in Frozen so again makes my heart very very happy and the protagonist of this book is Cat Royal who is an orphan and the ward of the Drury Lane Theatre. I'd completely forgotten as well that something I loved about this book, which I think is what made me pick it up in the first place when I was younger, is that one of the characters has my last name, Mr. Sid Fletcher, leader of the Butcher's Boys. A note to the reader. Be warned that the story you are about to read is not for the squeamish. I intend to bring you life as I live it. This is not the world of the drawing room and country estate, but backstage at the Drury Lane and on the streets of London. If you want to survive in my neighbourhood, you have to be prepared to use coarse language that packs a verbal punch. I include a glossary at the back to assist you, but are you bold enough to follow me? If so, read on. Catherine Cat Royal. This is a series of books and they are just so pleasing. They're very like small, chunky hardbacks. And they are all about Miss Cat Royal and the mischievous shenanigans that she gets up to. And I highly recommend these for theatre fans of all ages. Next is a real classic that I read when I was very young and I don't remember a huge amount about it, which means I'm gonna need to reread it, which is not a problem at all. But it is The Swish of the Curtain by Pamela Brown. And I didn't realize this copy has a blurb on it by Maggie Smith the Maggie Smith that says, I wanted to act before I read this book and afterwards there was no stopping me. And if that isn't testimony enough for this book, I don't know what is. But this book is about a group of seven young people, four girls, Lynn, Sandra, Vicky and Maddie, and three boys, Bulldog, Nigel and Jeremy, and they create the Blue Door Theatre Company and they enter a competition which could win them all places at drama school. Um, 
and it's just lovely. I just remember it being very warm and fuzzy and cosy and one of those books that you would just want to read whilst it's raining outside with a cup of tea on your sofa. And I also have um, I think it's a sequel. It is a sequel. Um, I've not read, I definitely have not read this one though because I was given this as a present by a director that I know called Matt Ryan. Um, and I think it was maybe on opening night or closing night of Heather's I was given this. Um, but I still haven't read it, Matt. I'm so sorry, but I will absolutely get round to reading it. Um, but this is also about the Blue Door Theatre Company and the kids that run it. So very very lovely cozy very quintessentially british books as well next up is a book that i read a couple years ago when i was researching for into the spotlight it is alice jones the ghost light by sarah rubin and this book is part of a series i think i think there's lots of alice jones mystery books um but this one just happens to be set in a theater um and i picked it up because i love ghost lights for those of you that don't know what a ghost light is, there's lots of theories around what they are, but my favourite theory, or I've got two favourite theories, um, a ghost light is essentially a light. It looks like a light bulb in a cage on a stick. That's what a ghost light looks like. I'll find a picture. Um, and there used to be one in my dressing room at the Haymarket um, when I was in Heather's. Usually you would put one in the centre of the stage and turn it on as the last person is leaving the theatre and the theories are that you would either leave it on to ward off evil spirits or you would leave it on so that the ghosts of actors past could do their own shows by the ghost light. I mean, the latter one just squeezes my heart and makes me a little bit emotional. Um, but that is what a ghost light is and that's why I picked up this book. When ghostly activity starts terrifying the cast rehearsing at an old theater, young sleuth Alice Jones's detective skills are secretly enlisted. As opening night approaches, Alice must dig deep into the theater's murky past and grapple with a mystery that has remained unsolved for decades with a stolen diamond at its heart. I mean, there's lots of these books that for some reason involve theatre and diamonds. I don't know why those two things go hand in hand, but this is a really fun little mystery. I couldn't do a theatrical book video without mentioning ballet shoes and of course one of its sister books, Theatre Shoes. I've not read Theatre Shoes, however if ballet shoes is theatrical, surely Theatre Shoes even more so. So they are both on my list. But for those of you that don't know anything about ballet shoes, I feel like I've mentioned it a million times on this channel since I wrote a retelling of Ballet Shoes, but I'll say it anyway. This is about three sisters, Pauline, Petrova, and Posey, Fossil. They are three orphaned children who are all found by their great uncle Matthew and brought to live together. Um, and Pauline wants to be an actress, Petrova wants to fly aeroplanes, and Posey wants to dance all day if she could. But then their great uncle Matthew, or Gum as they call him, goes missing and money is suddenly very, very tight. But help comes in the form of Madame Fedolia's Children's Academy of Dancing and Stage Training. And so the three sisters go to this school and end up acting and earning a little bit of money to help the family out. Um, and it's just gorgeous and again very quintessentially English and another one of those books that you definitely would read by a fire with a cup of tea or a cup of hot chocolate on a rainy day. It's really really lovely. And Theatre Shoes is based on the same academy, Madame Fedolia's Academy of Dancing and Stage Training and Grandmother sends Sorrel, Mark and Holly to that academy and soon they find themselves thrown into the exciting world of the theatre. They are expected to work hard and follow in the family footsteps but will they ever be able to live up to their grandmother's high expectations? And before I go, what would a video about books about theatre be without a little bit of shameless self-promotion? The paperback of my retelling of Ballet Shoes into the spotlight came out this Thursday just gone. It follows the story of Marigold, Mabel and Morris Pebble who live at the Pebble Theatre with their brilliant Aunt Maud or Bam as they call her and the theatre is in trouble it's just not selling enough tickets and so the children come up with a plan and the plan is to put on a show that is going to save the theatre and make enough money so that they can all stay there because it's not just a theatre it is also their home because they live at the top of the theatre with their brilliant Aunt Maud. This book is marketed as middle grade for 9 to 12 year olds, however if you like ballet shoes then it's for you. You will find some enjoyment from it. However, I have also written a book that is 
for an older audience, although I would still say 16 and up, um, called When the Curtain Falls. I don't have a copy up here, I think it's downstairs, but it looks like this. When the Curtain Falls follows two timelines, one in the 1950s where you get the story of a tragedy that happened on stage at the Southern Cross Theatre, and the ghosts of that tragedy are now haunting the theatre today, and the production in which that tragedy happened is now being revived and so the ghosts of the theatre are now coming back to life ready to haunt the actors in this new production. So that is when the curtain falls in a nutshell but if you want to read books about theatre I thought I would just throw my hat into the ring. But there we go! There is a list of some books about theatre and I hope that you enjoy them. If you read any of them please let me know Equally, if you have read any of them, let me know what you thought of them. I would love to hear your thoughts, and I will see you very, very soon. Mwah!